let's do some stuff about kind of things in the closer distance. Um, if you're drawing flowers and stuff like that, you're going to want to review the idea of the ribbon. And the ribbon is, is something that you wind up using, but um, uh, Will Weston has kind of codified. And the basic idea of the ribbon is that you can draw this ribbon shape right here, and it kind of feels like it's coming forward towards you and, and so on. And then you can modify this ribbon shape towards a bunch of different applications. Our application is going to be towards leaves and landscapey looking things. So if you take this idea of the ribbon, and you have it in this sort of formulaic flat way, if you start to vary the shape of that ribbon, things start to look landscapey very, very quickly. Especially if you start to give it like a little dip and a center line, you wind up with something that approximates a leaf or something right here, right? So that's the basic concept at work when you're approaching these kinds of close distance um, plants and flowers. So here I've got a semi-complicated um, thing to thing to draw, and I'll kind of draw just one part of it to show you an example. I'm always, I always like to start with the stalk or the stem of things. Um, I find that that's a little bit easier to deal with. And then um, I like to draw kind of what's on top first. What's on top is kind of this first little bit of the plant. And like like many plants, these leaves are just kind of V-shaped like that. If you look down them, and then we're going to go down the, down the plant a little bit. We'll run the center line down. We'll run in and across the center line. Then we'll run from the back and over and down. And I'm going to kind of go front to back here. So I'm going to do the, the uh, bits that are in front and then work my way towards the back. So I can do center line first, come back, come back. Here I'm working on the generic shape. Then I come down, center line. This one's going to overlap a fair amount. Come down. There we go. And this next one's going to go up and down and cross. So that's my center line. I'm going to go over and around and catch up, up, and then down. And then I've got one more under it that I can't really see because it's coming from back here. It picks up about here overlaps, comes down, overlaps, comes down. So that's my front half. My back, I have one coming up back here and coming down. Another one coming out from that and down with the center line about here. Got another little guy creeping up here. I can just barely see the center line going there, and that's really all I can see. And then the stock hits the ground somewhere about here. Done with my sketch. Now remember my ribbon concept, right? I'm going to start here. So this time, instead of like looking at the ribbon coming towards me, the ribbon's just kind of going to the side. So I know where the bottom is right here. And I can kind of evolve and make the plant do something more organic here. Now I'm drawing the underside of the front 
of this plant. Boom, I'm bringing it down into the plant proper. And then I can bring up the backside and head that towards the center, towards the point. It's gonna go over there. Then here I can start from the front point, work on kind of the ripples that it has. Then it goes up and over the center and back down. The center line goes here, picks up here, flows elegantly. Get that overlap. So I have two leaves drawn. Here, I'm going to start with the outer contour a little bit. Follow that perfect shape all the way down. Here, something interesting happens. There's a split in the leaf along the center line. And so that split gives me a little bit of variety. Then I can flow along here. There's a second split. Goes in towards the center there. The contour breaks up and gets a little sharp here. Gets real interesting. Connects back there. Then I've got this overlap here. Comes back to the center line. Center line runs back. Leaf runs on this side over here. Got a mini split here. Come down, I have another split that goes all the way down. And comes back there. I think these little splits and leaves are always good because it breaks up the contour, makes it much more interesting. And then I have to be sure to enclose that leaf shape here. Then I've got this guy, which is kind of eccentrically coming out. I'm going to start with the center line here and get that working because it kind of does this funky dip down thing. Then it dips down to a point, and then it comes back, runs around. And then I can use some of the actual texture bits to help describe the form a little, if I want. Last one down here on the front, comes up and around, down, I can add another split here if I want. I don't actually see one, but I know where they would be, so I can go ahead and do add one in, be kind of fun. This time there's a split going this way. There we go. From here, I'm going to change the angle of the stock because the stock kind of comes here, come, hits here, and comes down here, and then hits the ground here. The stock is basically a tube, right? So that tube is going to go up here below all this stuff and just kind of connect everything into the center. Then I'm going to come back and work my way. So I'm working my way front to back, which is an interesting way to work to me. Normally I, I would work back to front in a lot of situations, but I think this situation it works really well to go um, front to back because you're working with these overlaps and you want to keep things pretty simple. can't really see the center line very much, it's just kind of right here. So there, I've got the contour of this plant knocked out, so I can go back in and, uh, you know, might want to include some information about the ground here, just to be sure that the plant looks like it's grounded. And then I can go back with any kind of medium that I want to. I might switch mediums here and add something interesting. If you've got a warm gray marker, this is a really quick way to sketch all this stuff out. So what I can do on the warm gray, and it looks very different from the uh, from the cool gray, but um, you know, this is the cool gray 10%. You can barely see the 10%. Remember these markers dry, light, lighten up as they dry. So what I want to first do is go on the underside of every leaf where I can see an underside and uh, just block in that value. 
real dramatically. Dramatically, but loosely. And I don't have to, this is just studies, remember? Like you don't have to be perfect for studies. Um, and what's funny here is I really only see like a couple of spots, but then now what I can do is because there's overlap on these leaves, some shadows. Some cast shadows on those leaves. So there's definitely a big one down here too. All right, it's pretty simple. I can just kind of echo that leaf shape down on the on the leaf below it. And that creates a quick illusion of cast shadow. And I can do that back here as well. I can do that down the stock. Now I've got something that's looking semi-leafy, but now I can go in and I can add in some textures to kind of help with it. Because this these leaves in particular do have quite an, a large amount of texture. And I can be, again, I can be pretty loose with this and it's going to work out just fine. I can just work my way through, add in a fair amount of texture, especially on one side. And then if I need to, I can continue to use um, this warm gray marker. One thing I can do is I can bump up the darkness of this and I can use some hatching to kind of make sure the form comes across. I can follow the form a little bit. I can deepen up some of these cast shadows. Working with pens is pretty fun. I highly recommend it. And the other thing I can do is I can work into the plant leaf texture a little bit with um, the marker if I want. Here I've got a little bit of shadow that I can get across, like here, maybe like here and here, get a little bit of shadow, because the leaf is kind of like turning in a little bit in shadow. But then I can work into the texture too, especially if I go very faintly. And then I definitely want to get back into the texture in the background too, just to be sure that I haven't left anything out that I need to pay attention to. And there you have it. There's a quick plant study for the foreground plant. And, um, you know, um, I've got a bunch of references, you know, Plant references are pretty easy to go take. You just take a walk outside. Just be sure you include the whole plant, get a bunch of different lighting conditions and so on. Be sure that you're choosing angles that show you forms if you're gonna take references and have fun doing this.